webinar 826 join us in the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are here to give you carefully gathered stories, assuring you of accurate, truthful, and balanced newscast. I'm former Congressman Erin Tanyada. We are also seen in 1,360 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through www.untvweb.com. I'm Jerry Alcantara. And this is Why, Why News. Here are the headlines. Experts study more possibilities of Zika virus transmission. The Philippine National Police assures that security is, is all set for the start of the campaign period tomorrow. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority pushes for road sharing in Metro Manila. The Department of Labor and Employment confirms the decline of job orders for Filipinos in the Middle East. The Philippine Embassy works on the repatriation of the remains of 13 Filipinos who died in a hotel fire in Iraq. And the NHA Builders advances to the semifinals of the UNTV Cup Season 4 as the BFP Firefighters bids goodbye. First in the news, the World Health Organization conducts testing on other possible modes of transmission of the Zika virus. Joanna, tell us why. The World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control have intensified the studies conducted on possible ways that the Zika virus might be transmitted. Just recently, a Zika case was confirmed in Dallas, Texas, which was said to have been transmitted through sexual intercourse. But the Department of Health says body fluids are also under examination. Ang pinag-aaralan yung sa ihi, pati na sa iba pang body fluids. So, huwag nang hindi lang sa, sa laway o sa... sa... Uh, na nakukuha, baka pati pawis, hindi natin alam eh, body fluids lahat yan. The DOH has been continuously preparing their testing facilities in case the virus enters the country. Aside from the 1,000 testing kit, health centers were also assigned for patients afflicted with the virus. These are Baguio General Hospital, Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, San Lazaro Hospital, Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center in Visayas, and Southern Philippines Medical Center in Mindanao. Special attention shall be given to pregnant women in case the Zika virus enters the country. The authorities in Brazil confirm that most of the infants with microcephaly were born of mothers infected by Zika. DOH says 75% of Zika cases have no manifestation of symptoms. Eh, kunwari ikaw ay eh, nabuntis ka, nalamon mo may Zika ka, at nababasa mo yung posibilidad na magkaroon ng microcephaly, andun palagi yung pangamba sa utak mo hanggat hindi ka makapanganap. Mabibigyan dapat ng guidance yun. The first Zika case was recorded in 1940, but it was not paid much attention to because of the very few number of cases. John Anu reporting for Y News. The Commission on Elections has again postponed the start of the printing of the official ballots to next week. Tell us why, Victor Casale. For the third time, the Commission on Elections has postponed anew the start of the printing of the official ballots for the May polls. Ballot printing was scheduled to start today, but the poll body decided to move it to next week because the ballot faces are not yet available since they needed to modify the source code of the Election Management System or EMS. Komalek explained that they found a problem in the Consolidation and Canvassing System or CCS and to address compatibility issues, they needed to also adjust the EMS code. The no, problem we had to change something in the EMS, uh, in the CCS, because the network was uh, running the transmission when it was the network. Uh, kagaya CMS, which hindi dapat kasi stand alone yun eh, di ba? Yung mga transmissions, no? So pag binago mo yung CCS, hindi na siya compatible with EMS. Meron kang problema kasi shared code lang sila, no? Comelec and the SLI Global Solutions will finish today the final trusted build or the final source code of the EMS, CCS and of the vote counting machines or VCM. Due to the new delay, configuration of the vote counting machines and the deployment of it to the different areas of the country will be affected and not just the start of the ballot printing. 
Comelec Commissioner Christian Robert Lim says if the VCMs will not reach some areas on time, then elections in those areas might be postponed. Let's say may 7 na, nagka-configure pa rin kami ng machine, di ba? Eh kung hindi umabot sa area, so hindi ka magkakaroon ng eleksyon. The Comelec cannot move the, uh, the election day for the entire Philippines because that's constitutionally fixed. In my reading of the law, if we cannot have uh, an automated election, Comelec is, is uh, authorized to implement a manual election. But according to Senator Aquilino Pimentel III, he was assured that Comelec can implement automated polls on May 9. However, the question is if it can be done nationwide. Pimentel also said that the poll body's buffer time was also cut into half. However, Comelec Chairman Andres Bautista said even if the start of the ballot printing is again moved to a later date, they are confident that printing of the 57 million ballots can still be finished by the last week of April. Victor Cosare reporting for Y News. The Philippine National Police or the PNP encourages all politicians and political parties to inform them of their itinerary for the whole campaign period for the 2016 national elections. Joanna will tell us why. Part of the memorandum order of the COMELEC is to maintain peace in areas where the election candidates will be campaigning. This is why the Philippine National Police, through its Public Information Office Chief Police Chief Superintendent Will Ben Mayor, is calling on politicians and political groups to inform the police of their itinerary in order to set proper security measures for the benefit of those who will attend their meetings. Pag mga ganitong sitwasyon is uh, again uh, route security, area security, venue security ng ating uh, uh, PNP sa field units. Um, this has been uh, ongoing naman ng, for the past elections, kaya nakasama na rin ito sa ninagwa natin based doon sa Command Memorandum Circular. We ensure that uh, during the campaign is uh, safe and secure din yung ating mga kandidato na uh, umiikot sa mga lugar, especially yung mga critical areas. Mayor adds that they are keeping an eye on those areas included in the election watch list. Based doon sa assessment natin sa area is uh, doon din tayo naglalagay kung kado kadami ang ilalagay nating resources. So we need also to get from them information beforehand bago sila pumunta doon sa particular site na kung saan ay sila ay magkakampanya. Para naman uh, mabigyan natin ng kaukulang numero at uh, resources at coordination doon sa uh, particular uh, Security forces just like the armed forces of the Philippines kung kinaya kailangan pang mag pa sa amin. At present, the entire force of the PNP remains on heightened alert status and this may even intensify as the election draws near. Joanna reporting for Y News. OFW Family Club Party List Representative Roy Senyeres died this morning. Meanwhile, his party is now preparing for the possible substitution in place of his death. Grace Cassin will tell us why. OFW Family Club Party List Representative Roy Senere suffered cardiac arrest this Monday morning and passed away at 8.07. This was confirmed by his relatives through his lawyer attorney, Candy Rivas. According to Rivas, Senere is suffering complications of his diabetes. Nagulat nga kami kasi biglang nagkaroon na lang ng cardiac arrest. Last Saturday, we talked there. He was very, ano na, he was getting better na. Kasi kanina umaga daw, uh, bigla na lang tumawag yung kapatid, yung anak niya. Uh, nahirapan siya, huminga. Meanwhile, the Malacanang and the House of Representatives extend their sympathy to the Senyeres family. PCOO Secretary Herminio Coloma Jr. says Senyeres played his work well as the head of National Labor Relations Commission or NLRC and as as a Philippine ambassador to the United Arab Emirates. While House Speaker Belmonte Jr. says he is a great loss to the overseas Filipino workers community whom he represents. Just this Friday, Senyeres withdrew his candidacy due to his health condition. But the Comelec did not accept his withdrawal because it has to be submitted personally. Partido na Manggagawa at Magsasaka President Attorney Jose Malvar Villegas confirmed that they have already made a choice as to who will substitute the late ambassador. I will file a petition for substitution uh, for the late uh, Ambassador uh, Senyeres 
uh, but uh, I'm not yet uh, uh, more or less ready to announce the name. Senyeres served as Philippine Ambassador to the United Arab Emirates from 1994 to 1998 under the administration of then-President Fidel V. Ramos. He is also known for helping save the OFW Sara Balabagan from the death row. His body lies in state at the La Funeraria Paz at the Manila Memorial Park. Grace Kassin reporting for Y News. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority is promoting road sharing for motorists, cyclists, and pedestrians. Mon Hoxon tells why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority considers Ross Boulevard as one of the safest roads to use by cyclists as well as pedestrians. It has a decent bike lane and walkway that connects places around Manila. This is why MMDA wants to start the Bayanihan sa Daan or road sharing in Ross Boulevard for the benefit of the public. Ating purpose dito ay uh, mapagalaw yung mga tao at kargamento at hindi naman ibig sabihin na sasakyan ang may paggalaw natin. So uh, makikita natin dito na kung saan pwedeng magsama yung mga nagbibisikleta, naglalakad at gumagamit ng sasakyan sa iisang daan. MMDA promotes the use of bicycles as an alternative mode of transportation but it will still take some time to put bike lanes around Metro Manila. Importante to para sa mga bikers para sa awareness nung paggamit ng daan para pag-push din na bigyan ng karapatan yung mga bikers sa sa mga hindi lang sa mga sa mga secondary road pati sa mga sa mga primary road natin. MMDA admits that the main roads in Metro Manila is not safe for cyclists and pedestrians. There are cyclists and pedestrians that get involved in accidents because of the lack of safe bike lanes and walkway. Bayanian sa Daan promotes road sharing for motorists, cyclists and pedestrians in EDSA. MMDA has put a bike lane that is used comfortably by the public. But the problem is, the bike lane only extends up to a certain point in EDSA. From there, cyclists risk their lives alongside other vehicles in EDSA. According to Erwin Paala, an advocate of road safety, the legislative branch must give attention in putting up bike lanes around Metro Manila. Ang talagang pinto na dapat kinakatok namin, eh, legislatura. Buat ng 14th Congress, talagang marami nang nangarilang na batas na maganda sana, pero hindi umabot na second reading. Based on their record, for the past 10 years, there are almost 200 cyclists who died because of accidents, more than 7,000 who became disabled in more than 10,000 accidents. Meanwhile, the Department of Science and Technology brought the hybrid electric road train in Ross Boulevard to show that there is still a solution to the worsening mass transportation system in the country. Ito talaga ay train, pero naka, ano siya, uh, gulong. Rubber tires, ibig sabihin pwede ka agad siya ilatag gamitin ang existing na mga karsada with the same uh, uh, capacity ng train. The hybrid electric train is made by Filipino engineers. The DOST is open to any interested buyers on the road rate that can be used as mass transport. Mon Hoxon reporting for Y News. Motorists are not experiencing heavy traffic flow along EDSA. Mon Hoxon is at in, along EDSA Nepak Humart to tell us why life. Mon? Good evening, Kong Irene. Suspension of classes and work uh, this holiday had loosened heavy traffic in EDSA. Let us check the traffic situation. Motor traffic now approaching Munoz southbound lane, but after Munoz area, the traffic will loosen up until near road. Light to moderate traffic will be experienced starting from Edsa Camuning southbound all the way to Edsa Cubao Aurora. Traffic in Cubao Farmers in Edsa is also fast moving until Santolan flyover in front of Campo Crame. Light to moderate traffic is also expected southbound of Edsa Connecticut, but slightly loosening approaching Ortigas area. Light traffic in front of SM Mega Mall but gradually building up, uh, approaching crossing underpass in Mandaluyong. Vehicles going Makati will start to slow down in Orense, Guadalupe but light traffic in Buendia and Edsa Ayala. 
Meanwhile, motorists will experience moderate traffic in Edsa northbound, starting from Magallanes Interchange all the way to Ayala, Buendia, Orense in uh, Guadalupe, Pioneer, Bonnie and Edsa Show Boulevard in Mandaluyong. Light traffic starting from Mega Mall and Ortigas fly over northbound. But moderate traffic in White Plains and slightly moving until Santolan, Cubao Farmers and Edsa Cubao Aurora. Light traffic will start in front of Mega Q Mart all the way to Nia Road and Quezon Avenue fly over. But traffic will uh, start to build up from SM North until Munoz area. Kong area number coding is suspended because of the holiday but will resume tomorrow starting 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. But MMDA is implementing uh, window hours starting from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. And that's the latest in traffic. Back to you. Thank you, Mon Hoxon, live from EDSA Mega Q Mart. In other news, the office of the Ombudsman has ordered the dismissal of the mayor of Bohol. Joyce Balancho will tell us why. Bohol Mayor Apolinaria Balistoy can no longer serve in the government after the office of the Ombudsman ordered her dismissal from office. This came after the investigation of the anti-graft agency on the administrative case she is facing. The Ombudsman found Balistoy guilty of serious dishonesty, grave misconduct and falsification of documents after she allegedly faked her travel reimbursements from May to October 2010. The Ombudsman investigation revealed that Balistoy obtained a false certificate of attendance for four training modules. These certificates were used to incur reimbursements for her travel and training expenses amounting to more than 155,000 pesos. The Ombudsman discovered she only attended trainings in the province and not in Metro Manila and that it is impossible for her to be in different places at the same time. They also noted that there were no travel authorities issued for her attendance in the said trainings. Under the law, the Office of the Ombudsman has the power to order the dismissal of public officials after investigation reveals their participation in the anomalous and questionable businesses in the government. Joyce Balancho reporting for Y News. The armed forces of the Philippines downplays the alleged diversionary tactics of the Abu Sayyaf group. Would you tell us why Marge Navarro? The number of military troops engaged in capturing the terrorist Abu Sayyaf group is enough. The AFP Public Affairs Office gives this guarantee. Ang troops naman natin na na naka-engage sa loob ay nandoon talaga sa loob. So we have troops doing the logistics and admin. We also have uh, troops on combat operations, separate units here. It was reported recently that the Abu Sayyaf group planned to conduct atrocities to divert attention of pursuing soldiers. But for the AFP, ASG acts are purely terrorism. Uh, yung terrorism, uh, the language of terrorism is violence. Mm -hmm. So if they want to, so, to, to express themselves, they do bombings, pero hindi sa bundok. Kasi wala makakakita pag nasa bundok. So usually, they conduct it kung saan may makakakita. Just recently, seven Marines on a convoy were wounded when an improvised explosive device exploded at the roadside of Barangay Lagdota, Lipaw, Sulu. Meanwhile, the AFP reiterates that it is serious on neutralizing the terrorist and bandit group and it sent an additional Marine battalion which have just undergone retraining. Yung in-state natin is uh, we have uh, meron tayong uh, mga armado na hinahabol, mayroong mga kidnap victims, nahawak yung mga armado. So, yung end state natin is uh, yung hindi na sila makapag-conduct ng any more additional atrocities. So, ang, ang, yun ang gusto nating end state. So, we need everybody's hand on this. Aside from military troops, AFP is sending defense vehicles to the area, such as an armored personnel carriers. We have enough uh, air assets and uh, soon we will have more uh, armored assets on the ground. Uh, galing dito, pag na-distribute na mga yon, so we expect a, a capability and uh, survivability natin increase. Marge Navarro reporting for Y News. The Department of Labor and Employment announces that job orders in some countries in the Middle East have declined this 2016. Joanna will tell us why. 
Based on the latest report of the Department of Labor and Employment, there is a decline in job orders being offered in some countries within Middle East. Among these are al Quba region in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Abu Dhabi and Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Abu Dhabi has recorded 82% decline in job orders, which is considered to be the highest reduction. From 85 job orders in the first week of January 2016, it reduces to 16 job opportunities on the fourth week of the said month. Based on the report of the Philippine Overseas Labor and Offices, or POLO, it turned out that there is a decrease in manpower demand in some oil and gas company in the said country, which is due to terminated contracts, non-renewable projects, and some projects that were put on hold by some contractors. On the other hand, there is an 18.78% decline in job offer in Dubai last month. But unlike with Abu Dhabi, the reduction in job order in Dubai are from those that are related to hospital services, facilities management, retail sales, and not in oil sector. Meanwhile, from more than 2,600 job openings in al Quba region in Saudi Arabia last December 2015, it went down to 2,346 last January 2016. According to Paula, the reduction of job order in the said country is due to Saudization. This cannot be directly attributed to oil price decline, but possibly due to Saudization and fiscal constraint of companies. Aramco has no reported problem, but this that, but there are reports of its contractors having put projects on hold. On the other hand, Dole clarified that currently, the agency has not yet monitored any reports on massive retrenchments among Filipino workers in the Middle East. Based sa report po ng uh, aming labor office, uh, wala po akong nakikita ang dahilan para po uh, pag-isipan na magkakaroon po ng krisis uh, at least during the next uh, next three days or even the next week po. Wala ho kasing alert level. Ang magtitrigger ho ay alert level ng DFA. Despite this, Dole assures that they will conduct a weekly monitoring on the situation of the OFWs in these countries. The department also assures that in the event that if OFWs might lose their job in the Middle East, the government is now preparing thousands of job opportunities that they can avail here in the Philippines. Joan Anu reporting for Y News. The Embassy of the Philippines in Iraq is now working towards the immediate repatriation of the bodies of 13 Filipinos who died in a hotel fire last Friday. Tell us why, Anne Nunez. The Philippine Embassy in Baghdad confirms that there are 13 Filipinos who died in a fire at Capitol Hotel in Erbil, Iraq last Saturday. This clarifies earlier reports that 14 Filipinos have died in the incident. In a statement issued by Charge de Fer El Mercato, he confirmed that the Filipino fatalities were women. All of them died due to suffocation. All women were working in a spa inside the hotel. Aside from them, fatalities include three Iraqis, a Palestinian, and a still unidentified nationality. The fire was said to have started from a faulty electrical wiring at the basement of the Capitol Hotel. Meanwhile, in a chat message to UNTV, Kato said they decided not to disclose the names of the victims yet until their relatives in the Philippines have been informed. Embassy staff are currently in Erbil to work on the immediate repatriation of the remains of the killed OFWs. Authorities in Kurdistan region promised to closely coordinate with the Philippine government about the matter. There are about 2,000 Filipinos working at present in Iraq, mostly working in the Kurdistan region. Anne Nunez reporting for Y News. The Armed Forces of the Philippines works hand-in-hand -hand with the local business partners to strengthen tourism in Mindanao. Anunias will tell us why. The Armed Forces of the Philippines is now focusing on being a big help in the promotion of tourism through its Happy Home program and the Bayanihan Investment Operations. The Happy Home aims to provide livelihood and other benefits for rebel returnees, according to Colonel Louis de Maalia. 
Brigade Executive of 701st Brigade. This is one of the initiatives of the government to entice rebels to leave the mountains and return to civilization. Yung Happy Home, ito yung parang happy house nila, parang transition house nila from yung armed struggle na going to the mainstream society. So dito, piniprepare sila para uh, yung makukuha nilang benefits is magagamit nila ng tama pagbalik nila sa community. The military reported 57 rebel returnees last year and they are looking at an increased number this year because of the program that focuses on them. Meanwhile, the Bayanihan Operations is a collaboration with local businessmen for their own security to foster tourism in the area. We are just sustaining the peace and development and the Oriental. At uh, sa ngayon, we are focusing on the stakeholders' engagement. With regard to the start of the campaign period tomorrow, the military continues to remind candidates not to pay nor give any monetary support to said rebel group by paying the permit to campaign or PTC. In coordination with the COMELEC and the PNP, now we will file cases against them para ma-disqualify sila if ever malaman natin na kung nagbigay sila ng permit to campaign. Together with the UNTV News Team in Davao City, this is Ann Nunez reporting for Y News. Y News will be right back. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration records the lowest temperature in Metro Manila this morning. As of 6.20 a.m., the temperature dropped to 19.4 degrees Celsius. This is the lowest in Metro Manila for the 2015-2016 Amihan season. Pagasa says the northeast monsoon will continue to be experienced this week. Meanwhile, the tail end of a cold front is now affecting the Bicol area. Pagasa says the region will experience cloudy skies with light to moderate rains including the provinces of Quezon, Marinduque, Romblon, and Samar. Light rains will prevail over Cagayan Valley, Cordillera, and Aurora while isolated light rains will be experienced in Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon. The rest of the country will be partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers and thunderstorms. Pag-asa's gale warning was raised over the seaboards of Luzon and the eastern seaboard of Visayas. Small fishing vessels and sea crafts are advised not to venture in those areas due to high waves. Rescue teams continue to operate in Taiwan after a massive quake. Meanwhile, the United Nations Security Council ensures that North Korea will face serious consequences of their recent action. Christine Domingo will tell us why. In America, Venezuelan Ambassador Rafael Dario Ramirez Carreño announces that the United Nations Security Council is condemning North Korea's latest rocket launch and vows to take measures in response to Pyongyang's violations of UN resolutions. He adds that the members of the Security Council strongly condemned this launch and it is a serious violation of Security Council resolutions. U.S. Ambassador Samantha Powers says they will ensure that the Security Council imposes serious consequences. The United States and China began discussing a U.N. sanctions resolution after Pyongyang's January 6 atomic test. In Austria, Five Czech skiers were killed in a huge avalanche that swept away their group of 17 in the Austrian skiing region of Tyrol on Saturday. Two people were injured but out of acute danger, while 10 others survived unharmed. 
The experienced Czech skiers were taking part in a so-called free ride camp and had been repeatedly warned about the danger by locals. The entire skiing region had been on a level 3 avalanche alert out of a maximum 5 and several avalanches were also reported elsewhere. In Taiwan, rescue teams in Taiwan continue their operations in the hope of finding more survivors in a collapsed 17-story apartment tower in Tainan after a strong earthquake shook the city amid a celebration. The death toll rises to at least 35 with more than 100 still feared trapped in the rubble, according to the government. The massive quake struck the southern city of Tainan on Saturday, February 6. The collapse of the most seriously damaged building, Weiguan Building, killed 23. The building's lower floors pancaked on top of each other in the 6.4 magnitude quake and then the whole structure toppled, raising immediate questions about the quality of materials and workmanship used in its construction in the 1990s. Christine Domingo reporting for Y News. The UNTV Cup Season 4 is now gearing up for the semi-final round. Tell us why, Mon Hokson. A thrilling overtime game hyped up the Inari Sports Arena yesterday as NHA builders and BFP firefighters competed in a do-or-die match for the last semi-final slot in the UNTV Cup Season 4. Fans shouted their head off as both teams clashed until the last minute. The NHA builders dominated the game from the first to the third quarter, smashing the firefighters with a glaring 11-point lead. But the firefighters was able to move ahead at 62-61, when Julius Hayona gave a 3-point shot during the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. At two points near victory, the BFP lead the last four seconds of the game at 64-62. Seeing that slim chance to the semifinals, NHA head coach Bennett Palad called a timeout and prepared his team to its best play, which resulted in a 64 all score at the final 24.1 seconds. The BFP tried to regain its position, but they didn't have a good play until the end of the game. Last 9.8 seconds, Marvin Nadia gave that winning one-point shot at the free throw that secured the victory for the Builders with 74-73 score. Hailed best player of the game was Marvin Nadia with 9 points and 3 rebounds and Michael Tagiam who gave 10 points and 10 rebounds including that winning two-point shot at the overtime game. Uh, first of all, thank you po kay Jesus Christ, kay Lord God. At sarap po ng feeling namin at nanalo kami kahit medyo hirap na hirap. Medyo yung homework namin hindi na-click. So, struggle kami sa mga shooting namin. This is the first time that the NHA Builders had a chance at the semifinals on their second time to join the League of Public Servants. The Builders has completed the four teams who will battle in the semi-final round which will begin on Friday with a battle between the PNP Responders and the MMDA Black Wolves in the first game and the NHA Builders against AFP Cavaliers in the second game at the Inanes Sports Arena. Mon Hoxon reporting for Y News. Millions of fans were hyped at the American Football League Super Bowl Championships game. Mon Hoxon, would you tell us why? It was a star-studded Super Bowl 50s grand presentation in Santa Clara, California. The event opened with Lady Gaga's rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. During the halftime show, Coldplay, Beyonce and Bruno Mars took the center stage. Through her Twitter account, Miss Universe 2015 Pia Wurzbach commended the high-caliber performances in the Super Bowl. She specifically mentioned the three total performers. Pia was tasked as behind-the-scene reporter in the Super Bowl by the U.S. magazine show Inside Edition. Denver Broncos dominated the event with its quarterback Peyton Manning who geared the team to victory at 24-10. Manning is the oldest player to ever reach the championship at the age of 39. Meanwhile, a Filipino was able to join the league's golden anniversary this year. Panthers wide receiver Jordan Norwood was able to record the longest punt run, 1662 yards. He is the brother of PBA player Gabby Norwood. 
The Super Bowl is a championship game of the American National Football League and it is considered as the national pastime in America every year, not only to those who are in the stadium but also those in their homes. Together with the San Francisco, California news team, Mon Hoxon reporting for Y News. The United States defeats Poland 3-0 in their Fed Cup World Group 2 first round tie. Meanwhile, Hideki Matsuyama clinches an unlikely victory at the Phoenix Open. Aaron Romero will tell us why. Japan's Hideki Matsuyama parred the fourth extra hole to clinch an unlikely playoff victory over American Ricky Fowler at the Phoenix Open on Sunday. Matsuyama went birdie-birdie over the final two holes of regulation at the TPC Scottsdale to force the playoff as he and Fowler had matching 67s for a 14 under par 270, two strokes clear of American Harris English. They opened the sudden death playoff by playing the par 4 18th twice, matching each other first with par and then birdie before continuing at the par 4 10th which they both parred. The playoff finally ended at the par 4 17th where Fowler drove into a water hazard for the second time in barely an hour and could not save par. Matsuyama had the luxury of two putting from 5 feet for his second victory on the PGA Tour following the 2014 Memorial. Meanwhile, in windy conditions at the Holua Tennis Center, 35-year-old Venus Williams secured a convincing 6-1, 6-2 win in 61 minutes, her 19th Fed Cup singles victory. The former world number one moved into a 4-1 lead in the opening set against the world number 96, who struggled to adapt to the testing conditions. Williams led by a set and a break by the time Lynette got into the match, but the momentum was firmly with Williams, who broke again before sealing victory. Aaron Romero reporting for Y News. The Japanese couple's morning routine changes with the addition of a new family member. Meanwhile, thousands are delighted at the Smithsonian National Zoo in Washington. Precious Ong tells us why. A wild sparrow has moved into the home of Saitama Prefecture resident Yoshiko Fuhino. The sparrow, named Pi Chen, became attached to Fuhino and her husband Yoshio in the senior's home in Fukaya City. She originally met the bird in mid-November when she was working as a traffic guide for local school children. Since Pi Chen became part of the Fujino family, it has become a routine for them to have breakfast together, feeding him rice kernels out of their hands while they read the morning newspaper. Japanese wildlife protection and hunting law states people are allowed to capture wild sparrows as pets only during the three months from November 15 to February 15. Meanwhile, Panda Bay Bay marks another milestone taking his first steps outside of his enclosure at the National Zoo in Washington. The five-month-old Bay Bay dangles from a low branch after getting his leg caught. Bay Bay struggles for a few moments before he is able to lift his leg and take several steps on the ground. Bay Bay's foray outside of his enclosure comes nearly three months after the adorable cub delighted thousands by taking his first shaky steps. Precious Ong reporting for Y News. Sa Piling Moy Payapa was judged as the Song of the Week for the month of February in the A Song of Praise or As of Music Festival last night. And Nunez will tell us why. Moy Payapa, interpreted by Venus Bello Bello. A power ballad genre entitled Sa Piling Moy Payapa was hailed as the Song of the Week in the week of February of the A Song of Praise or ASOP Music Festival of UNTV. This was the masterpiece of amateur composer Carmencita Francisco, 
who became inspired to create a song of praise after her friend Leonardo de Jesus entered the grand finals of ASO Pier 4. Actually, hindi ko pinapalagay na lo ko mahirap na kasi mag-expect din. Pero syempre, salamat sa Diyos at nakuha yung kanta ko for this week. Also pleased by the said song was interpreter Venus Palobello, who is the cousin of ASOP Year 4 Best Interpreter Beverly Kaiman. The song of Carmen Sita competed with praise songs in Ibig Kita by Rodel Kubaku, sung by J.R. Estudillo, and Quit on Giving Up of ASOP Year 1 Grand Finalist Rigor J. Arellano, sung by Europop 2015 Grand Winner Ryan Tamundong. Meanwhile, Dr. Mon Del Rosario was accompanied by singers Rani Raimundo and Ms. Carlo Martinez as judges. And Nunez reporting for Y News. Those are the reasons behind the news. February 8, 2016. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as it unfolds. I am former Congressman Erin Tanyada. I'm Jerry Alcantara because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why News? news?